We are exploring ways to make money this year. And in this video, we're going to be learning about the vending machine business. I found this video of a guy who's making over 300,000 US dollars operating vending machines. The channel is called CNBC Make It. I'll link it down below so you can definitely check it out. But let's watch it together, learn together and react to it. And before we continue, just please press that subscribe button. It really helps me out with the algorithm and it helps to recommend this video to people just like like you who want to learn how to make money and of course it helps me to continue bringing these videos to you so go on ahead and do that and let's jump right into the video let's go it's hot <laughs> my name is marcus Bram, and i made over three hundred thousand dollars last year for my vending machine business hear that over three hundred thousand dollars from vending machine but it gets better to so keep watching people love vending machines because they're convenient if you're thirsty, you get a Coke. If you're hungry, you get some Doritos. Can I tell you, like, I've never really thought about vending machines in the past. Like, yes, we go and we see them in different areas, whether it's like on a dorm or at the mall or at these different places. But have we ever really stopped to think about the business behind it, the servicing behind it, like what really goes into it. I feel like before now, just being honest and transparent, I never really thought about exploring it. But as I'm now looking into these different ways of making money, it sounds like a lucrative opportunity. And I've been seeing a lot of videos online with a lot of different people talking about it, the pros and the cons. And it's just really interesting to me. But just the thought of all oh, you buy some stuff at the grocery store the wholesale or wherever you go to get the stuff you put it in this machine and it kind of just operates on a 24 7 basis so you do the upfront work and you leave it to run in the back kind of passive income because you're not actively doing it every day but you're still actively going to supply it so that's the thing but it's kind of interesting some of them have food some have drinks even seen people now put makeup in the vending machines like i've seen kylie jenner's makeup in her vending machine and at the airport i've seen where they have like the wireless ear pods and buds and the, the stuff like that so it's actually it's actually i'm intrigued let's continue not many people know that anybody can own them there's low startup costs and there's a potential for high return. I have 21 vending machines. He has 21 of them, wow. Spread right across Baltimore, Philadelphia, DC, and Detroit. These are a couple of my vending machines. This snack machine makes $800 a month. So his snack machine makes $800 a month. Let's see, 800 times 12, 12 is 896, that's $9,600 a year. and then times that by 21 and I'm sure some are gonna make more than others I'm assuming because of what's inside but that's just interesting to know okay that's an kind of an easy $800 without having to do much just just by you know thinking about it I can tell of course you'd want to put it in like high traffic areas places where people are as opposed to nobody's going that would make sense right but let's continue so this one is eight hundred dollars let's see what the others are and this drink machine makes a thousand dollars a month so this is just drinks and it's a thousand dollars on drinks people be thirsty <laughs> this machine makes a thousand dollars a month and this machine makes thirteen hundred dollars a month so let's deep dive and look at some of the things that are in some of these machines so i'm seeing on the left hand side here there's lays there's fritas there's doritos there's little bites there's cheese it there's candy m m okay so this one is snacks and sweets okay so it's your regular smuggler snack and on the other side i'm seeing more soda there's a mountain dew there's a pepsi there's monster drink there's me and that's bringing in thirteen hundred dollars a month okay i wonder where he has these stations because to bring in you know thirteen hundred dollars a month from something that costs a dollar or two dollars per bottle is quite a lot i think it must be in like a high traffic area. I wonder if he's gonna tell us. Let's continue. I started my vending machine business in 2018. I had a friend who saw a woman taking cash out of a vending machine and it kind of sparked the idea about maybe we should get into it. 
It cost me about 4,500 to get started in the vending machine business between two machines and two credit card readers. All right, so 4,500 dollars for two machines, right? And in the last clip we saw where one machine made him 1,300, other made it 1,000. So let's base it at 1,000. So at two machines, that would be 2,000 a month, right? Going at a thousand dollars rate. And by month two, he would have been at 4,000. By month three is at 6,000. He would have already cleared his loan and everything from there is profit. No, oh, that's quick. That's fast. That's, that sounds good. That's definitely something to look into, guys. 2018, it made $4,000. 2019, it made $25,000. 2020, it made over $200,000. 2021, it made over $300,000. And I'm currently projected to make over $500,000 in 2022. Just so you know, yes, this video was filmed in 2022 and he is, he projected 500,000 in 2022. So I can imagine what his 2023 projection will look like. It's probably close to a million dollars, but just the thought of like selling snacks, selling something as simple as snacks and sodas can make you almost a million dollars a year is incredible just look at that he started 2018 with almost nothing 2020 at 200,000 and you know what else I'm thinking about like in 2020 that's when we had the pandemic and most people were inside but he was still able to bring in $200,000 when most people were inside wow wow and then in 2021, we were still kind of inside to a point and he went up to $300,000. No, no, it makes me think that I feel like these are probably like on school. No, I was going to say school campus, but then schools were also out. People were mostly doing online. So unless it's for those that were still on the dorms or at the hospital, a lot of people were at the hospital you know, during COVID. So if he had placed them in the hospitals, maybe that's what happened. I don't know, right? I'm just speculating, but it would definitely make sense to put it in places where people are gonna be. And it's just so interesting to see that he's made so much money when people were inside for a business that's outside, you know? But again, another way to look at it is, it's a business that doesn't require you to interact face to face with people. So even though we were inside, you could have gone outside, get it and go back in. So maybe that's what's happening. I don't know. I don't know, but so many theories. Let's continue. Before starting the vending machine business, I was making $30,000 a year. I was living in poverty and I was just hoping that one day I can turn my life around. Like, I'm so happy for him going from $30,000 to $300,000. That, that's amazing. You know, I'm, I'm always so happy when people have these come up stories and people find different ways to turn their situation around and to make more money and to have a better quality of life. That, that's what life is about, right? So yeah, I, I want that for me. I want that for you. I want that for us. So we're, we're just learning of these different things so that we can apply some of these things to our lives so that we can have some of these success stories that others are having too. I'm so happy for this guy. I used to try to be a music producer and that didn't work out so I moved back home and my goal was to live with my mother for a period of time to save money. Oh that's so nice. That's so nice that he has his mom to take him back in and to stay with her until he gets back on his feet. I know not everyone has that kind of a support system, some do, but I'm so happy that his mom took a chance on him and took him in, because look at what happened now. I stayed with my mother for about nine months and was able to save up $10,000. Love that. He stayed with his mom and saved $10,000. You know, there are times when people move back and get so complacent because they don't have a comfortable place to stay, but I'm happy that he kept his eye on the prize and just did what he needed to do, save what he needed to save, and that helped him to get started. So I love these these kind of stories, man. I love them. From that point in time, I wanted to move to Philadelphia to start a business. I didn't know what that business was gonna be, and I landed on the vending machine business. What started out as a side hustle 
became my life. Oh, I love that he said that. Like, yeah, a lot of times we start um, doing these things on the side and it ends up becoming the main thing. And it's all about it just starting somewhere, starting with what you have and and it will go in the direction that you need it to go eventually. Just like for, for me and this YouTube channel, it has always been a side hustle or a side thing for me because for all the years that I've been creating content, I've always had a nine to five and then other things on the side. I'm never ever doing one thing at any given time. But <laughs> what started as that side thing became more than just a side thing, you know? And it's kind of the same for him, and that's that's beautiful. Love it. I went from making thirty thousand dollars a year to over three hundred thousand dollars a year. A few tips that I have for starting your own vending machine business. Ooh, listen up, we're gonna get some tips now. Is one, never buy a machine until you have a place to put it. That makes sense. I love that tip. You know, just like for some businesses, you don't want to buy and have the stock sitting there, and you don't have a location. So I'd say definitely. Um, do all the groundwork first, start to talk to these different places that you're intending to go, see if there's any availability there um, before you actually make that commitment in purchasing because you don't want to purchase and just have it sitting down. And of course, you want to find places that have high foot traffic. People are, are actively walking by, right? So that's a good tip. I think that makes sense. When I'm looking for a good vending location, I'm looking for places that have a lot of foot traffic. You know, places like um, apartments, hotels, motels, um, you know, student housing. To buy a vending machine, you want to look for your local vending machine warehouse, which I think is the best. You can also find vending machines on places like Craigslist, Facebook Market, or places like eBay. Okay. A vending machine could cost anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000, depending on if it's new or refurbished. This is the Vendo 511 drink machine, also known as your classic Pepsi machine. A refurbished machine like this will cost you around $1,500, and a new one will cost you around $3,500. Okay, so let's do some math again. So the, let's say we bought it new. $3,500 upfront cost. You know, according to him, it's a $1,000 per month. After three and a half months, after four months, you've actually recovered the cost of purchasing. So that's not bad. Within six months, for sure, you're definitely profiting. So it seems like a feasible idea as long as you find like a good location that people are actively going by. Well, this is your standard AMS snack machine. If you were to have a refurbished AMS snack machine, you should expect to pay around $1,500 to $2,000. And if this was a brand new snack machine, it would cost you roughly around $5,000. It's crazy that before now, I didn't think about the fact that there's so many different types of machines. <laughs> I don't know, it can, there's so many things that just happen on a daily and you, you don't really realize like everything that goes on behind it. But wow, like I know that there are different types of machines, but you know, you never really think it through. Comment below and let me know if, you, if you're, you're the same. This is the Crane National 449 combo machine. If you were to have a vending location that only has room for one machine, you can use something like this. If you were to get a refurbished machine, it would cost around $3,500. And if you were to get a new machine, it would cost you roughly $7,000. Oh, I like this one. The good thing about this one is that it holds both the snacks and the juice. The ones that he's shown before, it seemed like it's only snacks alone or juice alone. And I guess that's why this is as expensive as it is. But again, I think there's money to be made if it's in a good location, regardless. Before the pandemic, this machine was $1,400 and now it's $2,000. This machine was $1,000 and now it's $1,400. Mm. I mean, everything went up since the pandemic, even eggs. Before the pandemic, eggs was egg price. No, egg is house price. <laughs> And I'm saying that and I'm laughing, but it's ridiculous. Everything has skyrocketed since the pandemic. A typical day for me as the owner of Joiner Vending is I wake up, I check my vending machine sales, I contact my staff to see what machines they're gonna be stocking. I then shop for product for the machines that I service, and then I go stock the machines. See, that's interesting. He actually stocks the machine himself. So that's something that I'd, I'd say 
he'd be doing on a weekly basis probably or as soon as the stock runs out so there is still some active work that's happening but it's more passive because you know you're not there actually doing the selling of it but that, that's cool that's cool that he goes and stocks it himself and make sure that everything is up to par which is what should happen some of my best-selling products are coca-cola red bull peanut m m's nacho cheese doritos um lipton iced tea those are some of the things that people love the most in my machines makes sense makes sense i mean when i'm purchasing anything from a snack machine i feel like i go for some of those things too so yeah to get our vending machine product we go to wholesale distributors like sam's club bj's costco's I was about to say that, like, for you to get it at a reasonable price, I mean, it would make sense to go to the wholesale places, Costco's, the Sam's Club. If you're in Jamaica, the Price Marts, and places like that. So that, that's interesting. We even come to our local vending machine warehouse that also sells vending machine product. I buy a bottle of Coke for 55 cents, and I sell it for 175. I profit about a dollar 20 per bottle of Coke that I sell. I love how transparent he is with the cost of the things. Like, this is what I buy it for, this is what I sell it for, and this is what I profit. And he's just so open with that information. A lot of times people are so caged and closed off with the information about what they spend and what they earn and things like that. I like the transparency because then it helps other people to see the possibility, to see what can happen, you know? So I like that. I buy peanut M&M's for 75 cents at a wholesale price, and I resell it for $1.60. So I'm profiting 85 cents per pack. 30% of my revenue goes towards buying product for the vending machines. 10% goes towards paying my staff. Another 10% goes towards miscellaneous things like gas. And the other 50% I profit. 50% is profit. Some of the things I love about running a vending machine business is that I have a lot of flexibility. Um, I can work when I want to work. I also like the ability to service people, to provide a need to them. You know what I wonder? I wonder how often does it sell out? Like, I really want, I would love to know how often does he actually go to service it? And is there a mechanism to tell him when he's low and stuck? Or is it that you just have to keep checking? Like, you know, you pass by every day just to make sure. It'd be cool if it had some kind of a sensor to tell it, okay, we only have two Doritos left, so get, get cracking, you know? But I don't know if the technology is there yet for the vending machines, but that'd be cool. One of the challenges of running a vending machine business could be vandalism. Mm, I thought about that too. Like, there, there's a possibility of vandalism, so you'd probably want to get like a security camera in the area and have it make sure that the locks are secured and things like that. I can definitely see that as a challenge. So when scouting for location, it's very important to choose wisely, to choose somewhere that is relatively safe because anywhere can become unsafe when, when unsafe people come around, but somewhere that's relatively safe and that has high foot traffic. One time I had someone try to break into my vending machine to steal cash. They broke the bill validator where the cash goes in and efforts to take out the money. Fortunately for me, they weren't able to do so. People be so evil. Like imagine you're there trying to do something for yourself and somebody just... I just hate how people can be sometimes, man. In the future, I'm looking to expand to multiple states, add more vending machine locations around the nation. I want to add more staff to the team and then potentially open up my own vending machine warehouse where I will sell my own vending machines, car readers, and vending machine products. I love his ambition. You know, he could have just stopped at, I have one vending machine, but no. He went on to, oh, I now have 21 vending machines. And I also want to get more around the country. And I want to do this and I want to do that. And I love the ambition. You know, I love when people, you start somewhere, you start small, and then you start to build on it, and you start to look into different ways and, and expand the reach. And I love that he has that and has not become comfortable and complacent in what he's already getting, but still trying to push for more. I love that. I love ambitious people. By being in the vending machine business and finding success in it, I've been able to employ my sister, which is something very, very important to me and she's been able to turn her life around. She's running my business in Philadelphia while I live in the suburbs in a very nice house with my family in Maryland. I love, I love this, I love this.
love this. I love this. I love this. I've been able to change my life. I've been able to change my sister's life. I've been able to change my family's life with the vending machine business. Don't we just love these good success stories? Like him being able to change his life, his family's life, his sister's life, turning everything around from whatever he was doing before. Like, I love a good story, man. And I want to change other people's life by talking about the business, um, doing speaking events, seminars, webinars, whatever I can do to, you know, help everyone learn about a business that not a lot of people know about. So not only is he ambitious, but he's also selfless to be helping his family and stuff. And not only help his family, but he also wants to help other people. So he wants to do these seminars and these speaking engagement and to share the knowledge so that other people can benefit from the knowledge that he has and to be able to turn around their lives too. And I love when people are like that, you know, not just hugging everything to yourself or gatekeeping everything, but you're there to help. It has worked for you and you can help someone else to experience what you experience as well. And I love that. But there you have it, guys. This is definitely another hustle that we can consider based on his story. I know he may be giving it the simplified version. I'm sure there's a little more that goes into it, but that's where our research comes in. And again, there's no one size fit all for everyone. It's about what works for you and your lifestyle, but at least we get the ideas of the things that we can consider to see if this is something that we can also take on to do. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Hello. give this video a like if you like this let me know if you like this format and these types of videos so that i can know that i can continue to bring these type of videos and of course if you have any other suggestions i'm always open to feedback so leave those in the comment section below as well and if you haven't already subscribed now will be a good time to do so thank you so much for your support thank you for being here every week thank you for being here on this journey while i go through this transition i appreciate every single one of you thank you for your patience and let's grow together let's grow the channel let's grow the community let's do big things together all right love you all and i'll see you in the next one Rushing, rushing, rushing with the vlogging. Rushing, 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 a good thing thing. Like, share, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Watch every video member says she no hype. Like, share, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Watch every video member says she no hype. Hey, mm -hmm. it's Rushing. Mm -hmm. Remember to like, mm -hmm. comment, 